Hi guys, welcome back. So let's get into some of these Rugby World Cup warm-up selections. There's going to be more selections tomorrow, I'm sure. And just to let you know as well, I'm probably not going to be able to comment and react to these games at the weekend until into next week. So I've got some repairs going on here. A bit annoying, but that's the way it is. Let's look at this Springboks team. They're going to want to do better than they did last time against Argentina, where it was a tight one-point win. They are going to Argentina and they're leaving a load of players at home. This is quite clever, really. This is what they do. They make sure not too many players travel if they don't need to. So the likes of Peter Steff de Toy, Etzebeth, Marx, Delande, Colby, they're not travelling. I think it's 16 that aren't travelling. And it lets them play lots of other players who haven't played yet. It's still going to be a very strong team. They're really good with strength and depth, that is for sure. So let's go through this team. In the front row, we've got Trevor Nkane. Uh, Bongi Mbanambi is the captain for the first time. He's nearly on 60 caps. I'm sure that's going to be a great moment for him. We get to see a tight head, Thomas de Toy. He's been on the bench a few times. He gets a start here. A really good player, but it's going to be tough to break into the match day 23. Then we see a return of the pairing who started together in that very first game against Australia, Jean Klein and Ori. So let's see if they can go well again. Obviously, Klein is the guy that they got back from Ireland, if you like, back to his, his native South Africa. So he's going to be keen to impress. It's going to be a real bun fight to see who goes as second rows because they're just so strong there. Then Dion Ferry, who's an interesting player. Many of you saying he could go as maybe a backup hooker as well or even get a start at hooker. I don't think we're going to see him at hooker in this game because we've got Dwayber on the bench anyway. But that is something to bear in mind. If they want a versatile back row hooker, he could go in the 33 in that slot. Mostert gets another go at blindside. He didn't go the greatest last time he was there, so he's going to want to impress. And talking about impressing, Jasper Visa really wants to get his number eight shirt back from Dwayne Vermeulen. I think maybe that ship has sailed here and he's kind of playing to be in the squad. I think he will go in the 33, but I think he has lost his starting shirt unless he plays amazing. So let's see. Nine-wise, it's a little bit open for nines. We've got Cobus Reinert making a start. And then on the bench, we see Herschel Yantes. They're probably fighting it out for that third spot in the squad behind De Klerk and Hendrickser. So they're going to want to really prove a point. Libok plays again at 10. Pollard still coming back from injury. Willem didn't look that comfortable there. So getting him some experience now, I think is a really good shout. And he's got Esther Hazen and Am as the pairing outside him. I think that's a really strong pairing, although Dialande kind of reasserted himself in that 12 slot. Esther Hazen's going to want to say, I need to go to the World Cup at least. But Esther Hazen and Am do like that. Then we've got a slightly new look back three. We do see a different fullback to LaRue. Willems are having a start at fullback. Definitely worth having another guy have a go at fullback. Moody going there. Yeah, he's fighting for his place in the 33 for sure, but he's a very quick winger. And on the other wing, with Pimpy will want a really strong game as well. So points to prove all over this South African side. Um, on the bench, we see Dweber. I mentioned Stephen Camp is his debut. That's great for him at Loosehead. Koch we know all about at Tighthead. And we finally see two back rowers or second row back rower in Jean-Luc Dupree. Just a massive guy. If you've been watching him for Sale in England, he's an absolute monster. Part of the reason Sale have been so good. And we finally see Evan Roos as well. Hasn't got the start yet, but Roos is a hell of a talent. I've been talking about him for a while. So he's going to make, want to make an impact. So he's going to have to go some as well, just to go to the World Cup as well. Then we've got Creel on the bench covering the centres and Arenza covering the back three. So that's the South Africa team. Let me know what you think. Now let's talk about Scotland versus France. A super tough test, although they are at home. And yet, as expected, they're going for much more of a first choice team here. A few absentees, but pretty much as strong as they can make it against a really strong France. They tried a lot of different things in the last match, that is for sure including Healy at 10, who probably is looking for me. The second choice 10 actually looks very comfortable there. We see Blair Kinghorn, who I think will be Stuart Hogg's replacement, if you like. Hogg pulling out of the squad. He's just struggling with injuries. Something we talked about in the Six Nations. He's he's still good, but he's just not quite the athlete he was. And I think he's struggling with those injuries, saying he's not as quick as he was. We noticed it, and I think he's made the honourable thing and pulled out. Kinghorn is absolutely on top of his game. Very good counter-attacker as well. Good kicker. So I think it's a decent replacement. Anyway, let's get into this uh, 
forward pack, first of all. Pierre Schumann and Xander Fagerson, I believe, will be their starting props. Ewan Ashman won't be. He'll be fighting to get in the squad. I think Turner will probably be the starter. Although I do think the second rows are their first choice. The big Richie Gray and Grant Gilchrist, who's their vice captain at the moment. So front five, pretty much first choice apart from Hooker. And in the back row, they're just trying a couple of things. They tried a dodge last week. He's on the bench again. He's a hell of a player. Um, we see Richie injured. So Fagerson's going into six. Watson at seven. Watson got plenty to prove because Richie can play seven as well. Dodge is looking great. I think Watson will go, but certainly not guaranteed a start now. Uh, Watson when he used to be in the past. And then the slightly bigger Jack Dempsey they're trying at number eight. Now into the back line, and it's their first choice back line. I'm absolutely sure of it. On the bench, I think maybe we'll see Price instead of Horn, although we could. Redpath is very versatile, so a good replacement to have. And Ollie Smith will have another crack at fullback. Blair Kinghorn, I think, is the replacement for Stuart Hogg. White and Finn Russell, first choice halfbacks. They've been going well, as have Tui Pelutu and Jones. Then Darcy Graham back scoring last week he's an absolute firecracker and then big doing van der Merwe obviously on the other wing it's just such a great combination and then kinghorn at fullback who's got loads of passing and kicking as well so it's a fantastic um, back line and very close to a first choice pack as well so this is a great test to see where scotland are at going up against obviously france who are super strong and the favorites for the world cup on the bench there, Cherry, Batty and Nell, the replacement. Uh, front row, Cummings, second row, Darge, back row. And I, I really like Darge. If he comes on and outshines Watson, then Watson might have to watch out for his place in that squad. Um, Horn, Redpath and Smith, like I mentioned, the back's replacement. So how are they going to measure up against France? They're at home, so that's going to help a little bit. If they can have a really strong showing, that's going to push them into the World Cup in good stead, that's for sure, because obviously they're in that pool of death. So finally, let's talk about Wales, who are obviously playing England. Always a massive match. And this is a bit of a trial Welsh team because it needs to be. They need to find their best team and quickly really experimenting in the front row there. Two uncapped props to start against England. It's a big gamble. Uh, Domachowski apparently is a good scrummager. I don't know a lot about these props. Azarati is meant to be good around the park, but again, all eyes on them Ken Owens is injured, I think, for a lot of the World Cup as well. He's injured, although I'm sure they'll take him in the squad. So Elias will need to step up there, especially with two uncapped guys around him. So let me know if you think that's too much of a bit of a, a risk, really, from Gatlin chucking them in at the deep end. But they need to learn quickly. Daffod Jenkins is a guy I think has learned quickly and he's ready for international rugby, although I don't think he's going to be in his prime for a couple of years. He, he will be a, a Welsh great, but at the moment, Rowlands is the more likely starter with Beard, um, but Beard not playing this one. Schwinzer gets another chance at blindside. He wasn't that impressive in the Six Nations, but we know he's got the athletic ability. And Jack Morgan, absolutely shades of Sam Warburton, getting the captaincy very early. Hell of a player, really improved in the Six Nations despite Wales struggling. And we thought Aaron Wainwright would be Warren Gatlin's number eight, and he is. So let's see if he can repay that. And into the backs and more rolls of the dice from Gatlin, more experiments, and why not? They need to go for it. Davis is experienced at nine, of course, but Sam Costello isn't. I remember watching him for the under-20s for Wales, and he just ruled the show. Maybe taking him a while to get into the senior swing of things, but this could be his time. Max Llewellyn, another uncapped, very talented centre, physically big guy. Not surprising because his father, Gareth Llewellyn, nearly got 100 caps in the second row for Wales. So he was always going to be a big guy. And George North is obviously no teeny guy either, so that's a massive centre pairing. You would say very Gatland-esque, maybe. We've got Rio Dyer, who's played a few times now for Wales and looked decent. Rhys Zamet, we know all about his ability. Can he tear up this World Cup? Well, he could do. And at fullback, Lee Halfpenny, nearly 100 caps. He isn't as quick as he was. That's just the way it is. But he's always going to be technically correct and you know, good covering and all that sort of thing. Now, looking at the replacements and a couple of interesting names there for sure. Henry Thomas, formerly prop of England. Now for Montpellier, although he's had to give that up because he's got the phone call saying, do you fancy playing in a World Cup? And of course he does. So he's going to switch his nationality, which he can do now once. So he's going to play for Wales here. So let's see if he's good enough. Tane Plumtree, interesting back row replacement, born in Wales, 
But of course, his father is from New Zealand, uh, the coach of high repute, and I think his mother's South African. So an interesting roundabout way there. But we've got Henry Thomas and Tame Plumtree in the side. Some experience at half back on the bench, Williams and Dan Bigger. I'm sure both of those guys are going to go to the World Cup. And another young, promising centre, Mason Grady. So goodness me, even if they change their centres, they're going to be massive. So definitely some risks here, but he's got to go for it. I think Gatland, this is the right way to go. Chuck them in at the deep end, see how they go. Let me know if you think it's too much of a risk or exactly the right thing to do. All those comments below and I'll catch you next time.